Hi friends, I was asked many times to make a detailed video about the device for the restoration of automobile lead acid batteries. Well, be patient, because you will have a very detailed video about how to create a desulfurizer. And if you like the video, you can thank the author by pressing thumb up and sharing the video with your friends. Probably any driver faces a situation when the battery, which was unused for some time, can't give its nominal capacity, just turns the starter half a second, then stops, but the voltage on it is normal, 12 volt. In this case, people usually say, the battery doesn't hold a current. Everyone can face this, but why does it happen? The car battery consists of lead plates immersed in the electrolyte solution. In this case, the electrolyte is sulfuric acid. The process of charging and discharging the battery is nothing more than oxidation reduction process. A chemical reaction takes place during which the lead plate reacts with oxides on the adjacent plate. In the course of this reaction, sulfates are formed, which eventually accumulate on plate surface. Sulfates prevent the flow of current as they are a bad conductor, and over time the battery loses its capacity and is unable to give a large current for the starter's operation. If your battery is charged and discharged faster than before, but doesn't have mechanical damage, most likely the sulfating killed it. But don't despair, simply watch this video. The proposed device, further called the desulfator, creates short impulses of high amplitude and frequency. The impulse acts for a certain time, then resets for a certain time, and then the impulse acts again. Such impact processes can destroy the sulfate layer, and in theory this is possible. In practice, not all batteries can be restored due to the design features. Judging by the statistics, about 85% of all batteries are subject to recovery, but only if the cause of inoperability is sulfation without breakage of lead plates or other mechanical damage. How to use the device this device works on principle of charging desulfating. The usual desulfator is powered by a battery, which it desulfates and gradually discharges it. In this case, the device charges the battery with short impulses of high voltage and frequency. This circuit can also be used for charging low voltage lead batteries with a nominal voltage of 4 to 6 volts. They are used in Chinese lanterns, in children's electric cars, and so on. The circuit was originally designed for charging low-capacity batteries, but it can also be used to desulfate car batteries. Before you start the process of charging with desulfation, you need to recharge the car battery lightly. First, you need to find any power source with a voltage of 8 to 12 volts and connect it to the desulfator input, but not directly. You must connect through a 12 volt incandescent lamp with a power of about 21 watts so as not to exceed the charge current. This will be discussed in more detail at the end. The battery which needs to be restored is connected to the output of the device. Well, in principle, that's all. Since the device works in the audio range, you are likely to hear a weak whistle. The power components of the circuit should be slightly heated. With the oscilloscope, you can verify that the battery is charged with high-frequency current pulses. The circuit of the device is quite simple. By the way, we shouldn't forget to mention our Chinese friends. Yes, they also produce this thing. The cost of a model is about 10 bucks. And now, I will explain in simplest words how the circuit works. The voltage from the charger goes to the desulfurizer circuit through the fuse and the diode. The power for a low power part of the circuit supplied through a current limiting resistor and then it is smoothed out with a small electrolytic capacitor. The NE555 chip works in mode of a rectangular pulse generator. The frequency of these pulses is about 1 kHz. The duty cycle is about 90%. That is, the high-level signal continues most of the time. 
It is this impulse that we need in order to open the field effect transistor. But the problem is that when we send such an impulse to the FET, it will be open most of the time and only 10% in the closed state. So, through the transistor will pass too much current. As a result, we will get a strong heat on all the power components and a large current consumption of the whole circuit. This isn't effective and can damage the battery. There is one way. Why not reduce the duration of a high-level signal? Then the transistor will be open for a short time and everything will fall into place. Unfortunately, in such connection type, the design features of 555 timer don't allow this. So, how to be? The CD4049 chip is a CMOS logic and contains six logical inverters, not. Each inverter has one input and one output. Their task is negation. If the input receives a high level, the output is the opposite. In other words, we will get an inverted signal. When to the input is given, for example, such a signal, the output will be like this. And the previously mentioned 90%, which was the high-level signal, now have become low levels. And those 10% have become a high-level signal. It's really cool. Well, I will show it more colorfully on the oscilloscope. The blue beam is the signal on the input of the inverter and the yellow what comes out. Why are three inverters connected in parallel? It's very simple. To increase the load capacity of the chip and correctly control the FAT. What happens next? Field effect transistor 10% of the time is open, 90% closed. Open transistor closes the throttle on the ground of power. In the throttle, some energy will be accumulated. And when the transistor is closed, the circuit breaks. Due to the phenomenon of self-induction, which is inherent for any inductive load, the throttle gives an accumulated energy. This is a short-term surge of voltage with high amplitude. And the self-induction voltage is several times higher than the supply voltage. This voltage impulse is rectified and fed to the battery. The process occurs more than a thousand times per second, that is, the battery is supplied with a short duration high voltage pulses at a high frequency. This is what destroys the sulfate film. I connected the storage capacitor to the output of the circuit and it became clear that the amplitude value of the output voltage when powered from a 12 volt source reaches 70 to 75 volts and depends on the inductance of the storage throttle. But input of the circuit is a fuse and rectifier diode. The fuse will protect the desulfator with accidental short circuits at the output. The diode performs several functions. Firstly, it protects the circuit if you accidentally connect it to the charger incorrectly. And secondly, protects the charger from possible impulse noise and surges that are formed on the desulfator board. I think everyone understood how this works. About the components, well, with the timer and logic everything is clear. In my case, they are installed on the panels for solderless installation, but I advise you to solder after checking the operation of circuit. Field effect transistor IRF3205 or any other N channel with voltage from 60 to 200 volts and current from 30 amperes. I advise to install on a small radiator. The throttle has an inductance of about 200 microhenry, wound on a ring of power diron. They can be found in computer power supplies. The sizes of my ring are now in front of you. It is wound by a wire of 1 mm. The number of turns should be 60, but the wire was a little short and the inductance turned out slightly less. Anyway, the device works well. The dimensions of the ring aren't very critical. The main thing is the inductance value and wire diameter of 1 to 1.2 mm. 
The capacitor is 100 to 220 microfarad. It must rather have a low internal resistance, since the generator circuit is actually powered by this capacitor. It means that capacitor will constantly accumulate and give energy and even slightly heat it. Both diodes must be for a current of 5 to 10 amperes. You can use conventional ones, but it is advisable to take pulse diodes. I already developed a printed circuit board and you can download it with full archive of the project. The disulfator is made on a printed circuit board of small dimensions. You can order any boards at the GLC factory. A link to the website can be found in the description. And if you're interested in the process of creating printed circuit boards, I must say that recently GLC invited us to China and we made very detailed videos about all technological processes of creating boards and stencils for solder paste. Links can be found in the description. On the charger you need to set the current no more than 2 amperes, otherwise the fuse on the disulfator board will burn out. Someone will say, 2 amperes of charging current isn't enough. Yes, I agree, but don't forget that our goal isn't charging, but disulfation. At idle mode, device consumes only 100 milliamperes from the power supply. It can be connected to any charger with a voltage of 12 to 15 volts. If limit the current at a level of 2 amperes. The restriction can be made by a powerful resistor or incandescent bulb of the appropriate power connected to the power supply gap. You can also use lower voltage power supplies with a voltage of 8 to 10 volts as this circuit raises the initial voltage to several tens of volts. How long should the desulfation process last? The author of the device says that within two weeks of regular charging, it is possible to completely restore the old battery. Of course, without verification, I wouldn't record this video. I have several 6 volt batteries for 10 amperes hour, which was unused for several years. Within 5 days, I regularly charged one of these batteries with desulfator and then discharged. At the very beginning, the experimental battery gave a capacity of only 700 milliamperes hour. Adding of the distilled water didn't help, but the disulfator helped. After 5 days, the battery already gives 4 amperes out of 10 possible. I think it's a very good result. After a while, there will be another video with a full report on how and for how long I have recovered lead batteries. I have a lot of them. I hope this video was useful for many. In the description you will find links to purchase components for the assembly of this device and links to finished desulfators and also links to all devices used by me. Please don't forget to subscribe to our groups and social nets and my Instagram to support this video with your likes. Well, on this I say goodbye. Until new meetings, with you was Kasyan TV.